my name is Sarah. This channel is Sarah and Caitlin, and we are your best friends. Welcome to the channel. As you can see, Caitlin is not here today. It is just me, Sarah. <laughs> and before we get into this wonderful, quick, to the point video, I would love to say please subscribe to our channel. Please join our friend group. We love having you. This channel is growing. And if I'm being honest, Caitlin and I, we want a lot of subscribers but the cool thing is we have a lot of conversations where we care about depth with our subscribers meaning like caring about who's here rather than needing to blow up we don't have this really pressure to get this channel to a certain amount of numbers so i love that kind of puts the joy and the purpose in where we are now rather than like we got to get here and here and here if you want to subscribe i think that's the kind of channel you'd want to subscribe to so i'm kind of giving you that behind the scenes as you can see this video is called get right with god before it's too late whoa what a title and let me tell you before we get into it the background behind this video choice if i'm being honest um it's been on the schedule that i was gonna film a sit down video by myself and the video i was gonna film was dating advice. It was literally going to be called dating advice. I've been I've been seeing that like a lot of Christians especially like we they don't know how to date properly. I'm not saying that I know it all, but I'm saying there's some there's some cracks in the way that we view dating and that's leading us to have like rougher breakups or enter into marriages that aren't healthy all the things and so I was gonna share some of what I've learned um, from wonderful godly resources as to how to date more properly to protect our hearts the other person's heart and to do this thing right not perfectly but right and in a healthy way that could bring joy rather than pressure and stuff however as you can see that is not the video I'm filming at all and when I was doing some notes honestly I was really stumped I was planning on filming the dating video but just a few nights ago I was reading Revelation and I felt like I needed to do this video and so I couldn't keep on going with the notes of the dating video. I had to just honestly obey God and do this video. So that's how we're here. We're going to go into it. And uh, if you're wondering, is this video worth listening to? Yeah, it really is. It really, 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 really is. And there's a good chance that the devil might not want you to listen to this video, which is even more reason to just emphasize. I'm gonna make this video fast and quick. Um, and so my prayer is that the Lord would speak to you through this. So we can get into it. So I live here in America. I live in Florida. I say that to say I'm an American, all right? I live in the greatest country in the world. If you're from another country, cool beans, you might think yours is amazing. Well, America, we love America. Everyone wants to come to America. And I say that to say America also is very, very strong. And we believe that like we can do anything we set our minds to. Capitalism, power, all these wonderful things. And the reason I say that, I'll get into it in just a moment. I want to say that life is very distracting. Especially, especially if you live in a country in which you have resources um, at every turning corner. Life can be very distracting. We have jobs, we have relationships, we have troubles, we have pleasures, we have money, we have a desire for fame or to be known or to be loved. There are so many distractions. Not saying that any of the things I listed are bad because in it of themselves they're not bad. I'm just saying that there could be a lot of distractions. Distractions from what? Distractions from knowing that there's one God Yahweh, creator of all things, heavens and the earth. He's real, he's the one and only. He is not whatever we make him to be. He actually is who he says he is. Like in the same way that your mom or dad is who they are, like you can't imagine that there's some kind of way that like their sense of humor is that way. The way that they are is that way. That's like, oh, that's them. Yeah, God is like that. Like we can't make him to be something he's not. He is the most powerful being. He is the creator, the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega. He is who he says he is and he doesn't really need to prove it to anybody. He's not insecure. He is who he says he is and we have the opportunity to get to know him, our creator. We get an opportunity to seek him and we will find him if we seek him. So I say that to say life can be so distracting and it can distract us from thinking about what really, really is real and true. As we make our way through this life, 
this life that does end at some point and no, we don't know when. The reason I'm making this video is because in the book of Revelation, which is in the Bible, the word of God, we see that God already knows how this life is gonna, this time will wrap up. There's gonna come a time where he will pour his wrath upon all those who don't believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what really matters is to have that in our minds. And so I want to tell you these things so that you know what's up. I feel like I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't tell you what's really up. So this is what Jesus says in Revelations 3, 14. He, writes a, he tells John to write a letter to this church, and this is for us. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation, that's Jesus. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. This is what I want you specifically to get out of this. You say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth, and I don't need a thing. But you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So there's this deception and the deception is that we don't need God. If you need money, get a job. If you need friendships, go on an app. If you need love, go find it in a human. If you need satisfaction, go find it in sexual things or in drugs or in other ways. We think we have everything we need. We think we're rich and I'm not talking just to people who are millionaire. Don't be so small-minded. I'm talking to every individual who thinks that they don't need God, which can happen to me all the time too. There's gonna come a time, and it says in Revelations, where the book of life will be opened, and it's gonna have an accounting of everything that you've done in this life. The most important thing being, do you believe in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for the sins of the world. That's what it's gonna come down to. And it's either gonna be that yes, your name is in that book of life, or no, it's not, and you will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. Read Revelation. Now, here's the thing that might sound for a moment really harsh. Like, what kind of God is this? That he could throw humans into the lake of burning sulfur. What kind of God is that? I wish I had known this sooner, all these things. Well, in John 3, 17, it says, Jesus said this, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God didn't send Jesus Christ to condemn you, to say that you're not doing good enough, you're not religious enough, you don't fit into the Christian mold enough, you suck. He didn't come and send Jesus to do that. He sent Jesus to simply save us. Save us from what? The condemnation to come, the judgment to come. And if even if you're not a believer, there's this story that we're all really familiar with. It's Noah and the ark. This is what happened. God said there's going to be a flood. And he gave all the people hundreds of years. He gave them time. And he told Noah to build an ark. There's going to be a flood. Prepare yourself. So Noah for years and years is building this ark. And the doors of the ark were open. It wasn't until the rain started to fall, which took a long time, that the ark doors had to close. It was open to all. And the only ones who went onto the boat was Noah's family. But everyone else wasn't excluded. They were invited. Why didn't they get on the boat? Well, the Bible says they were marrying, they were eating, they were drinking, life was going on as usual. They were deceived. They thought that because everything looked normal, that everything was fine. But they heard, they heard what was gonna happen. They called Noah crazy for the flood. And so it's so important for you to know, don't be deceived that just because this is just how life works, this is, it's always gonna be this way. I know everything. Do you think you know everything? If like, we're all under 110 years old. The reason I'm sharing this is because God loves you. He loves me so much that he sent Jesus Christ that literally, if you're feeling overwhelmed, his desire is that you would believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us. We are all sinners. Seriously, the moment you came out of your mother's womb, you weren't, you weren't holy. God is the only holy one. We fell short. We fall short all the time. Even obviously me, we all do. We're not holy the way that God is holy. But when Jesus Christ died in that lamb, he's the perfect lamb who had no sin. When he bore our sins, 
we now can be clothed in his righteousness and God can look at us the way that he looks at Jesus Christ, although we don't deserve it. And that's what happened. So out of all of this, what I'm saying is Jesus Christ is the solution. He is the gate into the ark and get into it, get into it. You gotta get right with God because there will come a time. It's either gonna be when you die and that second your soul goes there or when Jesus comes back and you might not be with us. We gotta get right with God. He is satisfaction for the body. He's love for the heart and soul. He's wisdom for the mind. He's everything. He's everything. He's the creator. He knows us better than we even know ourselves. And the craziest thing is that he loves us. He didn't do all of these things because he hates us. He has sent us a savior to save us. My prayer is that this this uh, feeling of repentance would come upon you where you would realize you really don't know it all. You really have messed up a lot and you really do need a savior. And that's kind of that feeling of repentance. So repent, say, God, I'm sorry for thinking I know it all. Turn to Jesus Christ, turn away from that kind of like thinking you know it all way and accept the gift, the free gift of salvation. And the Bible says, this is how I'll end it off with, that when all this is said and done, when, the, when earth and heaven pass away and the new renewed thing comes, this is what's gonna be yelled. Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write down these words for they are trustworthy and true. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all of this. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, sexual and moral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So obviously, you got to read more to find out everything, but it's really good for those who believe in Jesus Christ and have a relationship with him. It's really not good for those who don't uh, accept, who decide to not accept. And so my encouragement to you, my urge to you is get right with God. There's an open invitation. There's this really chill open door. And you want to know why it's really chill? Because the Bible says he's got his patience. But it don't take his patience for granted. For his patience, it leads us to repentance. His kindness leads us to repentance. Think about it. He's giving you another day to get to know him. You could be... Sh- you could die like you could have died but instead he gives you more time and more time his kindness and patience leads to repentance so don't take it for granted yeah that wraps it up and the reason why i said that america thing in the beginning is because like i said in the beginning with those verses we think we need to have we think we have it all we think because we got our lives covered that we're good but jesus really says you're pitiful poor and naked like your soul is not taken care of and you're being deceived so don't be deceived realize that we need him just because in this earth all of a sudden we've got these systems where we're so self-sufficient we're really not as self-sufficient as we think we are it's really every good thing comes from god and there's going to be a time when all this stuff will be wrapped up and so This kind of stuff is really refreshing and necessary because we just get so stuck in the processes of life and like maybe you're, you've been stressed about this little thing, if it be with your job, a relationship, your family, your problems. And this kind of message, the message of hope, the message of what's to come, it brings us back to reality. Like it reminds us that like, let's not get so stuck in in like so in the moment that we forget the bird's eye, like everything, the fact that God is already in control and he's already written beginning to end and yet still chooses to walk through life with us on a daily, hourly, minute by minute basis. So we serve a God who loves his people. We serve a God who leaves an open door for all to come in, but you've got to choose to come in. You've got to choose. Love you guys very much. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you have any video requests, let us know. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.